today because you know, the words to it come right out of the gospel that we're going to hear today. In today's gospel, uh, Jesus uh, experiences the death of somebody that he loves very much. And we're going to talk a little bit about the people who have died and, um, and what they experience when they have a life in Jesus Christ. So we're going to begin our session today with a very special prayer. It's called the Litany of the Saints. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I like this picture that I took uh, at Immaculate Conception Catholic Church over in Hampton. If you look behind me, you'll see the, that the window, it's beautiful colors, has pictures of a lot of different saints. As Christians, we believe that friends of Jesus who have died are in heaven or will be someday. Every person in heaven is what we call a saint, and we can ask them to pray for us. We don't pray directly to saints, but we ask saints to pray for us. Kind of like if you were sick and you asked a friend of yours to pray for you, Certainly, hopefully, that person would do that for you. And that's what the saints do. They pray for us because they have a special place in heaven. And we have a special prayer in the Catholic Church that we call the Litany of the Saints. A litany is a prayer that usually has a phrase that's repeated over and over again. So in this case, the phrase is pray for us. We name a particular saint and they pray for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to sing the Litany of the Saints. Before we do, I'd like for you to take a moment and just think of not so much the saints in heaven that we know very well, but the saints that you know very well, uh, maybe members of your family or friends or people that you know of that have died. 
take a minute and discuss some of those people that you might want to pray for as we pray the Litany of the Saints. Just talk, uh, talk about that with your family. Okay, we're going to sing the Litany of the Saints. It's, it's very easy. Your part is, pray for us. So the cantor will sing uh, the name of a saint or several saints, and then we'll sing, pray for us, and I'll be singing with you. And then every once in a while, we'll sing, all you holy men and women, pray for us. Try that. All you holy men and women, pray for us. Great. So we're going to uh, sing... Uh, the names of lots of saints. You'll hear saints that you've never heard of before in your life. And at the end of each invocation, each name, then you sing, pray for us, and then we'll sing that all you holy men and women. At a certain point, I'm going to pause the, the song and ask you again to think of people that you would like to include in this litany of saints. Well, we'll do that a little later. Let's just start with our litany of saints. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Mary and Joseph, pray for us, pray for us.
There's a few prayers that end the litany of the saints that we're going to sing. But um, while we're singing this, and, and actually I'm going to sing this, and I'd like for you in your family just to name the people that you thought of at the beginning of this prayer. People in your family, people in the world, people that you know of or know uh, that have died. And we believe that because they have died in Christ Jesus, that they are going to, that they are in heaven. And um, they may not be named saints, but they're saints in heaven. And we want to pray for them as well. So as we're listening to this last part of the prayer, in your family, I just want you to name those people. You don't have to sing it, but you can just voice it and name those people one at a time, and then all of you respond, pray for us. That's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? I love the idea that um, even during these times when we're isolated from one another, uh, when we can't go out and, and visit people, that there's still people praying for us, not only in other homes, but also in heaven, uh, that, uh, that people are watching out for us and that they have a special place in heaven, especially people that we have known and loved. That's a, that's a great thought, isn't it? So let's go ahead and go to our uh, lesson, and you should have your copy of Good News. Uh, either you picked it up at church in the literature rack, or your uh, parents printed it, printed it out for you. But uh, let's take a look at the, the cover of Good News for this week. If you need to pause right here and get your copy of Good News or print it out, uh, go ahead and do that. But if you have your copy of Good News, take a look at the two pictures that are on the cover. You'll notice that the two pictures kind of look the same, but what are the ways that the pictures are the same and what are the ways that they are different? And I'm going to give you a few minutes to circle all the signs of life on the bottom picture 
that make a difference? What are the signs of life on the bottom picture that make a difference? In other words, how are these two pictures, what are the differences that you spot in these pictures? seasons, right? Can you name the four seasons? Spring, summer, winter, and fall. Okay, so there's four seasons. Now, out of those four seasons, what are the two seasons where you see the most signs of life? Right, spring and summer. That's when we see uh, in the springtime, we're starting to see that now, aren't we? We talked last week about, um, you know, spring just started uh, last week. And uh, we talked about the, the signs of life that we're seeing even in our own yards and, and when we go for a walk around in our neighborhoods. Uh, so in spring, we definitely see things starting to come up. And during summer, everything is green and lush and we're having to mow the lawn and, and, and do all of that. We see those signs of life. 
So in the other seasons, uh, in fall and winter, we start to see, in the fall, we start to see things die. And during the winter, all of the trees are bare and um, there aren't as many signs of life in the seasons around there. Leaves change their color in fall, flowers die, trees kind of go to sleep in the wintertime. One of the realities, one of the things that we know about life is that everything in all, all things that live will eventually die. A few years ago, um, I had this old, beautiful tree in my front yard, and all of a sudden it just started to get brown, and all of the leaves fell off of it, and I called in a tree expert because I was worried about what was happening with this tree. This tree was probably 80 years old in my, in my yard. And, um, and the, uh, the man that came in and looked at it said, well, have you been watering it? And I, was, and I thought to myself, well, I would never think to water a tree that's that old. But he said, that, you know, that if, when we have droughts, uh, that um, a lot of times the trees don't get as much water as they need. And he said also trees just last, just live a certain amount of time, and then they, they die like everything else. So we're going to read a story about, um, about somebody that experiences death in his life. So turn to page two in your Good News magazine. Let's read this story together. Peter and Grandma Carson were visiting on her front porch. He saw his friends Carlos and Ian running toward them. They looked upset. What's wrong? Peter asked. A car hit Rusty in front of your house, Carlos said. We think he's dead, Ian added. The three boys ran down the block. Peter's mom was kneeling next to Rusty. Peter looked at Rusty lying in the street. One paw stuck up in the air. Wind blew his long red fur. He ran in front of a car, Mom said to Peter as she gave him a hug. The lady stopped. She felt so bad. Peter's throat felt so tight that he couldn't say anything. Peter's friends didn't know what to say. Grandma arrived and put her hand on Peter's shoulder. Later that day, Peter went to visit Grandma. She sat down on the curb next to him. Where will you bury Rusty, she asked. In the backyard, Peter said. He felt an ache in his throat again. Mom said I can get another dog, but I don't want another dog. I want Rusty. Tears filled his eyes. I know, Grandma said. She put her arm around Peter. You have a sad place inside you about Rusty. Someday, the happy memories will push away some of the sadness you feel. I like to watch him run to catch your frisbee. Yeah, he was a smart dog, Peter said, and smiled a little. Let's dig up a flower for you to plant on Rusty's grave, Grandma said. That's a sad story. Let's take some time to discuss it. How would you, well, take a minute just in your, in your family to discuss what happened in the story. You know, who, who was involved and, and what happened in, in the story. Take a minute to discuss how you would feel if Rusty were your dog. What are the feelings that you would feel? Maybe you've had something like this happen to you. Take a minute and talk about that.
Now take some time to discuss these questions as a family. Why does death make us so sad? And who listens to your sad feelings? Why do you choose that person to share with? How does that person listen and help you? Have you ever listened to someone else's sad feelings? Have you ever shared your sad feelings with God? This is a really important discussion, and I really want everybody in your family to share your answers to these questions. So I'm going to give you some time to talk about these questions in the yellow box.
you know, it's not ever easy to talk about death, but um, hopefully you feel comfortable talking with your parents about this and your parents feel comfortable talking with you about it as well. Uh, the fact is that death is part of life and, uh, and people are made of living matter and like all the other things that die, people eventually die uh, too. Uh, and it's a sad thing when that happens, but as Christians, we believe that we also will rise from the dead uh, with Jesus, just like Jesus did. And um, we believe that our soul, the, the part of us that's in our heart, in our minds, that enables us to know and love, always continues to live, and that's what goes to heaven to be with God. And one day, we believe that we will be reunited with our bodies and our bodies will be, be, t be taken up into heaven as well. That's a lot to kind of wrap our brains around. But uh, like I said, it's important to talk about this and, uh, and to really celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead and he has given us that resurrection as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to proclaim our gospel. So um, what do we do when we proclaim the gospel? We all stand and uh, actually sit back down for a minute. Um, before you stand, I want you to take a look at the gospel. You'll notice on page three that the gospel for today is written out in parts, kind of like a play. I'm going to read the part of the narrator when I read the gospel, but I'm not going to read the other parts. I'd like for you to read those parts at home. I'll pause for you to be able to do that. So uh, you need to decide right now who's going to read the part of Martha, who's going to read the part of Mary, and who's going to read the part of Jesus. So take a minute to decide who's going to do which. But again, I'm going to pause after I read the narrator parts and you should read the, the different parts that are there as well. Parents, you can explain this if, uh, if it's difficult to understand. So now let's all stand and we'll sing our gospel acclamation. The words are, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'll sing it once and then you repeat. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And we remember we make the sign of the cross on our foreheads that the word of God might always be in our minds, on our lips, that the word of God might always be on our lips, that we might always speak the word of God and over our hearts, that the word of God might always be in our hearts. Again, I will read the narrator parts and you at home We'll read the other parts out loud, and I will pause for you to do that. Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus was very sick and went to see him. But Lazarus died before Jesus got there. Lazarus' sister, Martha, went out to meet Jesus. Martha went to get her sister, Mary. Jesus started to cry.
They took Jesus to the tomb. Jesus prayed. When Jesus finished praying, he said in a loud voice, Lazarus walked out of the tomb. Many people began to believe in Jesus because he did this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for participating in that gospel and listening so well. I want you to discuss for just a minute, what is it that Martha and Mary believe about Jesus? Look back at the text of the reading and talk about what Martha and Mary believe about Jesus. Well, one thing that Martha and Mary believe about Jesus is that he's the Son of God. They say that, don't they? They also say that they believe that if Jesus had been there, that he would have been able to do something and Lazarus wouldn't have died. So they believe that Jesus can do miracles. They also believe that because of Jesus, all of us will be raised from the dead. So that's all good news that Martha and Mary have to do. I want you to spend some more time with this gospel. Remember last week I had you act out the gospel and, uh, and uh, videotape it with your uh, phone. And I'd like for you to do the same thing today. So I want you to go back to the gospel and, I'm, and you can pause the video after I finish talking here. Um, you can pause the video and, and do this. Remember that we're all disciples of Jesus, like, like Lazarus, like Martha and Mary. We're followers of Jesus. And one of the things that disciples do is they tell other people about Jesus. And all of us are kind of holed up in our houses, all kind of staying away from one another. But we have this wonderful gift of technology uh, so that we can tell other people about Jesus. So I want you to spend some time right now and get out your phone, and I want you to act out the gospel. This is a kind of a cool gospel to do because you can actually use a door uh, for the tomb. And so when Lazarus comes out, uh, you can open the door and, uh, and show that Lazarus is coming out of the tomb. So the, the door will be the big stone that's rolled across the, uh, the tomb's entrance. So I want you to um, act out this gospel, and then I want you to send that video to somebody that needs to hear some good news, uh, some good news about Jesus. So spend some time doing that. Now, I do want to remind you, last week I didn't receive any of your videos, and I really want to see these videos. So if you could send it to me, too, here's my uh, email address. So make sure you send it to me when you... Um, when you uh, uh, do your video, but send it to someone else or send it to several people that need to hear the good news. You can post it on your social media. So spend some time doing that now. So this is a good time to pause the video. And um, after you've done that, you can come back. Uh, if you want to, you can come back tomorrow after you do the, after you do the video. But uh, do come back because we have some more work to do. Thanks. Welcome back. I hope you had a lot of fun doing your videos. Don't forget, send it to Mark Hoggard so that I can take a look at the videos that you did because I want to see what you're sharing with the world about the gospel of Jesus Christ. One more thing before our closing prayer is I'd like to talk to you just briefly about the difference between being raised to life like Lazarus was and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the resurrection that all of us will experience. 
Take a look in your good news on the bottom of page two to understand the difference between what happened with Lazarus and Jesus' resurrection. Jesus' resurrection is different from how Lazarus came back to life. Uh, Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, but in it was the same kind of body. It was the same body that he had before. So Lazarus would eventually, we don't think about this very often, but he, Lazarus would eventually die again and be buried in the same way that all of us will die and be buried. Um, Lazarus' body would die again, and in his risen body, Jesus will live forever. Uh, so Jesus is, when we hear the resurrection story, uh, in the coming weeks during the Easter season, one of the things that we'll notice in the stories is that Jesus' body is different from ours, ours. His resurrected body is different. He can kind of come and go as he pleases and nobody's quite sure how he got in or out of the room. He can actually disguise his appearance. And we believe that in the resurrection on the last day, when uh, Jesus returns, our souls will be reunited with our body, and we will have that resurrected body as well. It's kind of a perfect body, and that body will be taken up into heaven. Jesus opened heaven to us, and if we follow Jesus, we will live forever ever in heaven after we die. One of the prayers that we pray is the Lord's Prayer, or the Our Father. And in that prayer, uh, we pray that God helps us to become more like him. Becoming more like God will help us to get into heaven. Let's take a minute and pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Uh, and you'll notice that little note on the bottom of page 2. If you go to pages 35 and 40 in your uh, Good News, What the Church Believes and Teaches book, um, You'll, you can learn more about the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer that everybody should know. If you don't know the Lord's Prayer already, uh, this is a great time to work on uh, committing that, uh, that prayer to memory. To help you reflect more on what the meaning of Jesus' resurrection is about, there's an exercise on page 4, the back page of your Gospel Weekly, that will help you to do that. What you do is you fill out the words and th those words that you fill out, you'll see that there's little squares and you use those squares to solve the, the puzzle. If you have difficulty uh, figuring out the puzzle or, or you need some of the answers, feel free to email me and I'll be glad to send you that information. Next week is Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday, and we'll be beginning Holy Week. Now, again, we can't gather at the church, but we are going to be celebrating Holy Week. It's the most important week of the entire year. So uh, instead of our usual lesson, there will be a, 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 I'll give you a link to your Good News magazine, but we're going to spend, be spending all of our time next week talking about how to prepare for Holy Week, and especially things that you can do at home to participate in our Holy Week celebration. We're working really hard right now to make sure that we can live stream all of our Holy Week liturgies. As a matter of fact, this Sunday we're going to be uh, live streaming our Sunday Mass at 9 o'clock. So if you haven't already missed that, you can, uh, you can go to our website at 9 o'clock to see how to do that. Our, our website address is right here. Uh, even if you missed it, you can still go and watch a recording of it. So, uh, so make sure you check that out. And then uh, we'll also be live streaming uh, Palm Sunday next week. And uh, again, go to our website to check that out and how to, how to participate in that. 
And uh, one of the things that we are, are working on right now is how to get the blessed palms to you. We obviously can't come to your house, uh, so we'll announce uh, during the week how to come and get your blessed palms. I know a lot of people like to uh, get that palm and, and uh, as a way of participating in, in the liturgy. Even though you can't be here, we'll certainly be thinking of you as we pray that liturgy. We will be blessing the palms and, uh, and we'll make sure that uh, you can get those uh, palms. Um, the other thing is, uh, like I said, next week we're going to be talking about how to participate in the uh, Holy Week liturgies. Make sure you watch that. It'll actually be one video for all three age groups uh, and, and their families. And we'll be talking about some things that you can do to prepare for Holy Thursday, uh, Good Friday, and our Easter celebrations. Uh, because there's uh, lots of things that we want you to do at home. So be sure to check that out. So let's go ahead and go into our closing prayer. And um, it, we prayed the Lord's Prayer a little bit earlier. We're going to pray it again. And you might know if you pray the rosary that uh, we have a custom of when we pray the rosary in a group that, um, that one person who is leading the rosary uh, prays the first part of each prayer and then the, the congregation, as it were, uh, participates or prays out the second part. So we're going to do that with the Lord's Prayer. I will pray the first part of the Lord's Prayer, and then I would like for you to pray the second part at home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. It's so great to be able to gather with you this way each week, and I hope that you're enjoying it too. I'd love to get some feedback. I'd love to see those videos. So again, uh, be sure to email me with any questions that you have. Uh, parents, especially if you have any questions about any of the material that we've covered today, if you need some advice, feel free to give me a call at the, uh, at the parish offices. Uh, the number is right here. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, God bless you and keep you and be assured that I'm thinking of you and praying for you. Take care. And I
I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day, and I will raise you up, and I will raise.